project management, full of tools and techniques and jargon and all sorts of things. This session is looking at something called product-based planning. Some of you may have heard of this, but many won't. Product-based planning to me is just a wonderful technique. I have to say it saves me hours. I can't imagine planning a project without using product-based planning. So what is it? Well, you might have heard of work breakdown structures. I don't know. For me, it's taking the end result of a project and breaking it down into its component parts. And then for each of those components, being able to properly specify and define exactly what I want in terms of quality, cost and time. And then, of course, resource. And being able to break that down in that way allows me to put a proper budget together a proper schedule together, proper quality standards. So I know exactly what's being delivered and I can control my project product by product. So what's this like? Well, it consists of four steps really. The first one is a proper and clear description of what the overall project is designed to deliver, a specification really for the overall project. Without that being clear, the rest won't happen. If you said, you, oh, I need a fleet of cars to um, to take certain people to a football match in a few weeks' time, well, that fleet of cars could be anything. They could be two-seater cars, they could be people carriers, they could be Rolls-Royce, they could be minis, and any of them would do the job. It's not a clear enough specification. So the first place is a proper specification for your project. From there, then, we either do a top-down or a bottom-up method of identifying what all the component parts would be. If it's a project you've worked with before, it's usually quite simple to take classic and standard categories and underneath each of those, break those categories into the components. If it's a relatively new project, it's better starting bottom up. Be creative, think what it could include. How will you best categorise those things? So at a high level, it looks a bit like an organisation chart, but of products. And then each of those products can, if necessary, be broken down further. Let me give you an example. A nice, simple water bottle. So we could class it as a water bottle. Or we could break it into its component parts. There is the plastic. And the plastic needs to have a specification. How bendy does it need to be? How long has it got to last? What's the constituent components within this particular plastic. It's going to be used for drinking water, it's not going to be used for chemicals. So how, how is that actually going to be created? It has a cap. What sort of a cap? Well, this is a simple screw top. It's going to leave its band behind. It's not a flip top, it's not a sports top, it's a straightforward screw cap. It has a label. Now the label has to be defined. It's going to have to have glue to be attached to the plastic bottle. It's got to have words. It'll have to have a company logo on there somewhere. It's got to have ingredients. It's got to comply with European standards for products. So you've got to have the right languages in the right order. You've got to have the percentages of the constituent parts of the water itself. So that would break down into quite a number of different components. And each of the things we have to create or change or deliver as part of our project would have specifications in this way. So every one of these would say, who do we go to for our bottle supplier? Do we go to the same organisation for caps or do we go somewhere else? Do we print the labels in-house? Are they done by the bottling company? Where do we get the water from? So we would know suppliers everything. We could then say when things need to be delivered, how we're going to check the quality, and we also need to, we'll be able to find out how much each of these will cost. We can then work out the total cost of the project when we've done this for every single item. There's obviously a logical sequence to be followed when we put a, a bottle together. It's no good putting the glue on the label until the bottle is actually there because the glue will dry out before you apply the label to the bottle. So there's a logical sequence that says bottle has to arrive, glue has to be attached, then label has to be attached. The lid, flexible. We could do that before or after the label. 
one thing's for sure, there's no good putting the lid on before you put the water in. So again, there's a logical sequence. When you put these products into a sequence, it's called a product flow diagram. And that flow diagram helps get rid of any possible concerns we might have about missing things out. So, product breakdown structure, product flow diagram. The breakdown structure is like a hierarchy. The flow diagram is simply the sequence. If you've not tried this before, I really, really highly recommend it. And you'll see from the diagram that actually it's very simple. You can see both the product flow diagram and the product breakdown structure as we've gone through this video. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy using the product breakdown structure just as much as I do.